Should we try to avoid, add or avoid salt in our diet? How big a problem is salt? What health problems does it cause? And why do some people say we need salt? Well, you do need salt. Um, sodium is a normal electrolyte that your body requires. It doesn't require anywhere near the amounts that we consume, but you need some, you, you do need salt. Um, and plant foods don't have very much of it, uh, of it. So I do not object. If a person sit, has at the table has a salt shake and they put a little bit of salt on the surface of their food, the amount of sodium that they're adding is trivial. And for some people it improves palatability. Where we run into trouble, we run into trouble with factories who take an innocent uh, portion of green beans and put in enough salt to sink a ship. Um, and then they seal up the can. Um, a lot of canned foods are high in sodium. Now, some are marked low sodium and that's good. Uh, cheese is a huge offender. You know, people are, know that potato chips are salty. There is more salt in two ounces of cheddar than there is in two ounces of potato chips. Um, and if it's Velveeta, it's like 800 milligrams in, in one two ounce serving, I'm not kidding. Um, so cheese is, is, I mean, there's a million reasons to not eat cheese, but sodium is one of them. What affects sex drive and how do you keep it strong in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, or is that not realistic? Well, it can be realistic, but I'm, it's not necessarily desirable. Um, I mean, it's, it's up to people if they, if they really want to um, maintain a sex drive or not. Um, it's very normal, particularly for women at around the time of menopause to have a diminution in their sex drive. And they're okay with it. Um, it's not a disease, it's not a disorder. Um, uh, people have tried to label it as such. And uh, there's a, a doctor named Adrian, Dr. Adrian Fulberman here in, in DC, who has done some terrific writing and speaking on, um, it's a disorder if your husband thinks it's a disorder. Um, but for you, you're perfectly fine to decide, look, factories closed, I'm not making any more babies now. Um, so I, I have to be one, I'm, I'm not really cheering for this culture of eternal youth where we, we want to bang like rabbits um, uh, onto old age. I mean, there are other ways to spend your time. Don't get me wrong. If you want to, go for it. Uh, but but I, I don't think it's something to be idealized. Um, uh, it's, it's something that, that uh, is, is a, a part of our reproductive years that heaven knows why it continues for as long as it does. How much does sleep affect our health and our hormones? Is it really important? Oh yeah, uh, I mean, sleep affects us in many ways. Um, if you don't sleep well, as I can say, <laughs> I learned during my years of internship, you know, when you're on call every third night, and I mean, you do not sleep at all um, during those nights. Um, two things happen. One is your memory is is impaired because you haven't your brain hasn't had the time, the normal memory integration time during sleep is completely lost. Uh, the emotional integration time is also lost. Um, during the early morning hours when you're dreaming, your body, you, your, your mind is, is integrating emotions. And if you don't have that time in sleep, you're gonna be crabby the next day and your memory is gonna be shot. You'll, you'll get through a day, but after two or three days, you're not gonna be yourself at all. And you prop yourself up with caffeine, that's not the same as a good night sleep. Um, worse, if you, have not slept well, you will then eat anything just to get through the day. Um, your resolve to go running that day and to eat broccoli will be shot. Um, and then all kinds of other problems uh, arise as a result of that. So it's a good idea to get a good night's sleep. Um, and for some of us, we have to force ourselves to really close that book at 10 o'clock, do go to sleep. Um, be careful about alcohol, be careful about caffeine because they will both disrupt sleep a little bit. Um, don't eat a lot of stuff in the evening. Um, and you'll, you'll find that your, your sleep can be better. I do have a whole chapter, um, on, uh, on sleep, um, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in a book that I wrote called Power Foods for the Brain. And we talk about sleep, uh, in some detail because people, most people I have a little trouble there. How do you protect your thyroid? Uh, two things. Um, first of all, your thyroid is at the base of your neck and it makes thyroid hormone, which gives you energy as we were talking about earlier. Um, your thyroid needs iodine. The element iodine is essential for making thyroid hormone. And there aren't a huge number of foods that have it. Um, nature's 
greatest source is sea vegetables. And so if we are a coastal people and we live in Japan, you know, there's like sea vegetables all day long, seaweeds. Uh, but for me growing up in Fargo, seaweed was something we never heard of. Um, and, you know, we did not have a seaweed salad. Um, but I encourage people to have seaweed as part of their, to kind of learn about it. Um, if, you, if you have a sushi roll, like not a fish sushi, but cucumber roll or asparagus roll, that nori that it's wrapped in, loaded with, with healthy iodine. Um, iodized salt is okay. Uh, maybe even a third of a teaspoon of it um, will give you a start in the iodine that you need. So that's number one. Uh, number two, we've been talking about plant-based diets and really cheerleading for them um, throughout this whole program. But the thyroid is another reason for it because researchers have found that vegans have the least risk of hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism of any diet group. And the reason seems to be, we think, that the, the proteins in meat or dairy or maybe eggs trigger an autoimmune reaction that, that harms the thyroid. It's, the disease is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. That's the hypothyroidism or Graves' disease, which is hyperthyroidism. They're both autoimmune conditions and they're, we, we believe they are triggered at least in part by dietary antigens, uh, meaning animal proteins. So um, another good reason to avoid them. Um, by the way, with, with, the, with this condition and all conditions, don't fire your doctor. Do take advantage of medical care. If you've got thyroid disease, you need to see an endocrinologist, you need to be diagnosed and you may need treatment. Um, and do not just assume that if you eat asparagus, you don't need medical care, um, you do. And it's, it's important to be monitored and treated appropriately. Hopefully a healthy diet will minimize your need for treatment, but you don't want to forego it. Can type two diabetes be reversed? And if so, how? Yeah. Um, we, uh, back when I was a kid, we didn't think that was possible, but um, we started seeing this 20 some years ago in people who would come into our research trials and they would adopt a healthy, completely plant-based diet, minimizing oils and having healthy low glycemic index foods like beans and vegetables and fruits. And their, their diabetes would improve, their need for medication would diminish and in some cases, you would never know they ever had diabetes. It's the, it is the most amazing and beautiful thing to see um, that diagnosis being erased from a patient's chart. Um, the strategy is because you're avoiding animal fat, there, because you're avoiding animal products, there's no animal fat in your diet. Because you're also keeping vegetable oils very low, there's not much of any kind of fat in your diet. So the fat inside your liver and muscle cells starts to dissipate when that happens, your natural insulin can work again and it can work to get the sugar into your cells. So get the fat out of your cells that will let, let the sugar get out of your blood into your cells and you got a shot at reversing diabetes. Why was it important for you to come speak here at the Real Truth About Health Conference? There are so many people who are eager to improve their health. And yet at the same time, there are so many um, ways to change your diet, some of which are a whole lot better than others. And unfortunately, there's some, sometimes there's fadism involved and sometimes wishful thinking. Um, and industry is always dangling addictive foods in front of us. And so I wanted to be part of this program to be, uh, hopefully share the results of the research that we've been doing with the hope that people will in turn, not only improve their own health, but most importantly, pass this information on to their loved ones, especially their kids, so that maybe their health will be better than, than their moms and dads ever could have been. Uh, well, with that, we wanna thank you for all the meaningful work you do, and, and especially for joining us today. Uh, it's meant a lot to us and to our audiences, and um, thank you just very, very much for all you do. We appreciate it. Thank you, it's been my pleasure. Have a, have a wonderful rest of the day and weekend. And we'll see you at the conference. All right. Thanks a million. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye now.